Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in very wet Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, well, we have pretty much another full week of rain. So I'm certainly not going to be able to get too carrying on working in the cockpit and in fact it is not much of the stuff I wanted to do this week that I'm going to get around to but there's always stuff to do so let's dive into that. But as always I'd also like to thank all my Patreon and PayPal supporters for your ongoing support. Uh, it's you that make the show go. Okay let's dive in to something. Well, well, well what better thing to do on a rainy day than tidy up and sort stuff. Oh my gosh. The Folksal had so much storage in it and I have to reallocate almost everything for this summer's cruise. Plus, my daughter Erin is coming on Saturday, so I have to be able to move myself into the Folksal so I can give her the aft cabin. Anyway, it's moving tons of stuff around that has kind of got out of hand, I will admit. And sadly, because of the bloody rain, I've had to move all the thwart stuff back inside so it doesn't pick up all that moisture and re-cup. Anyway, some fun stuff is, uh, is happening. I have a selection of things from Amazon I'm going to show you shortly that are going to have a lot to do with, a lot to do with improving the content. Anyway, let me dive back into all of this. Well, isn't this always what happens when you clean up first, you make a miserable mess. Okay. I can't believe how much stuff was in the folks hall. Let me take you for a quick tour in here for those of you who may never have seen this tiny, tiny little uh, forward head. Yes, the boat actually has a forward head, forward even of the forecastle and uh, this uh, little space is actually significantly larger than the entire forecastle on Poem. Um, anyway, I'm quite looking forward to getting a, a sweet little head in here, but in the meantime, it'll continue to just be storage. Some of you who've been watching a while will remember the little adventure with this through hull. Oh, that was fun. Okay, this should be fun. I have some really good friends here at the marina uh, with a sailboat and a little diesel engine in it with a Balmar alternator on it and a Balmar uh, regulator. Well, we played with it for quite a few days now and we've determined that the regulator has failed. Uh, the alternator works fine, but the regulator will only send full power um, to the field, therefore it constantly overcharges the battery. So I did a little research and apparently it's not all that uncommon. Um, I also had an idea. This is a real stat, <laughs> and uh, it's a 50, um, 25 watt, 500 ohm real stat that I believe I can use uh, to simply make a completely manual um, charge control. In other words, uh, with no voltage going to the field on the alternator, it won't charge anything. And with full voltage, uh, it'll charge at maximum that it can do, which will be too much. Now, the owners have um, much happier to spend $25 on this rather than whatever, many, many, many hundreds on a new regulator. And at least this is a stopgap. And the neat thing about it is that it's a backup. In fact, I think this is interesting enough that everyone should have one of these aboard. Um, so that they can always set it up quickly as a backup voltage regulator for their alternator because basically most alternators work the same way um, with the with the field current. Now, <laughs> I may be missing the boat here completely and plenty of you are saying, no, no, Peter, don't do that. But uh, quite a few people on the internet seem to have done this um, because I had looked to see what resistance would be suitable um, based on the load, but of course no one really knows what the load is. So. Oh, taking a wild guess. This is off Amazon. Doesn't it look like it came off a plane from World War II? I, 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 I just love this thing. Okay, thing is I got to solder on a couple of pigtails because these are not quick connects of any sort. And uh, to do that, I have to restore the gnarly electrode or whatever you call this, the element on my soldering iron with some nice new ones. Let's get to it. This poor, uh, element, electrode, heater, I don't know what you call this thing, has definitely uh, done its service. I haven't changed the electrode on this in about 20 years. I keep calling this electrode, I don't know what it's called. All right, let's see if this is going to achieve hotness. Very nice, woohoo! 
Okay, simple potentiometer or rheostat theory here. Basically, there's three terminals on it. The two outside terminals attach to the winding that goes around and around and around and around this core, and the center terminal attaches to the wiper, which basically touches um, the, uh, the windings at some point. So every time you move it a degree or two, it adds one more winding of this resistive wire into the circuit. So basically, all the way against this end, uh, there's almost no resistance because the, the current comes in this terminal straight into the wiper and straight out of this terminal. However, if I turn all the way to the left, uh, the uh, current has to pass through all of these wires before it gets to the wiper and it will be at the maximum resistance. I do want it to be turning to the right like a volume knob for more current, so I'm going to solder my pigtails on these two. Now with all soldering, let the terminal, let the heat on the terminal actually melt the solder, not the soldering iron. There we go, one. And for a little added strain relief, we'll throw on a little shrink tube. Okay, so we got it installed here. Uh, what do you got going on there? Looks awesome, looks awesome. Man, that worked out really, really well. Are we gonna try it? Yeah, we're replacing this piece of shit. Yeah. With this Soviet looking piece of... Super simple, <laughs> eh? Simple tech. Absolutely. And what went wrong with this anyway? Do we know? Well, it's impossible to know, obviously, yeah. because it's gelled all over. So. Yeah. We went through all the diagnostics and stuff and it, it, it failed the diagnostics, but it doesn't tell you what to do with them. And so even anyway. if you want to fix it, what, you start cutting through this, the, the, the fiberglass? Or? Yeah, I don't think we're going to play with that. Anyway, if this works and you're willing to do it, but well, you're the kind of guy that doesn't mind that, right? I think it looks better. That's cool. Okay, let's try it. You going to start her up? Yep. Okay. So I won't bring you all the way over there because it's hard to read, but David will tell us what it's reading. So it says 12.8 and we can... Ah, I love that! Hear the engine start to work? 13, yeah, 13, like it's probably too much right now. 14, we'll bring it down a bit. 13.5, that's it, pretty good. Excellent. Manual regulator. Now, of course, it does mean you have to pay some attention to it, but... 600. Yeah. $28. <laughs> exactly. $18. Exactly. So I, I think everyone should have one of these on their boat, at least in a drawer somewhere, because it's a five minute hack and you can now control your alternator properly. I, I think it's just super. Fantastic. So can I get you guys to join me for beer of the week this week? Yes. Absolutely. Coming aboard? That's good. Okay. We got to pick some beer. Cool. Cheers. See ya. I mean it folks. I think everyone with a boat should get themselves a rheostat. Now that was, uh, 50 ohm, 25 watt. I think we're only using the top quarter of the range. So maybe a 20 ohm uh, or so would be more appropriate. Um, for a few bucks, throw it in a drawer. And if your uh, regular ever fails on you, you just put this in between the ignition um, voltage. In other words, the, the, the power that goes on when you turn the ignition on and the field on the alternator and we're off to the races. Okay. Well, folks, I have some fantastic news for you regarding Poem. I have secured a boat shed for Poem. This beautiful little 30-foot uh, boat shed will fit Poem absolutely perfectly, and uh, I'm going to rent it for probably the next year or more um, to be able to work on it perpetually indoors uh, over the next winter. It means all the bright work can be done inside, all the interior stuff, everything can be done nice and dry and out of the weather. I'm super, super excited and it was incredibly reasonable. I mean, it even has a little bit of a bench in here with a little vice on it. Um, so pretty excited. Um, the current tenant is moving out shortly and uh, we'll be able to get Poem in here and uh, all this stuff out of here and uh, get started on some pretty neat stuff. Ah, to be fair, won't be much happening over the summer. This is just dry, safe storage, uh, but come the fall, I'll be able to hit her hard and boy, there's going to be a lot of work done in here over the next year. Fun. Really you're living on a construction site, aren't you? No problem. Yeah. And the window will swing 180 degrees so that you're that way. Yeah. 
Lady Zephyrus and I both have the same kind of dinghy. It's a Minto, 10 foot or just slightly over 10 feet. I absolutely love these boats, uh, very traditional to the Pacific Northwest. Apparently it was based on a little wooden dinghy that was found on a beach somewhere in British Columbia. But anyway, they're great little boats. But you can see there's a difference. <laughs> they're both sailing, full sailing rig uh, Mintos. Um, Lady Zephyrus is a genuine factory built one and it is really nice. Mine was a kit. Uh, at some point you could buy just the hull and the spars and the sails and things like that. So this was a kit boat. Now strangely enough, this boat has had a long and hard life. That one was built and never used until I bought it and I've hardly used it. But all the thwarts basically just fell out of it. It just, it, it wasn't glued with me. Anyway, whatever. And the paint just completely failed on it. The bottom is perfect, like it's mint. Plus there's a couple of other differences. This Minto has a collapsible mast. It's 17 feet long, but it'll come apart into two sections, which is reasonable. And it has a nice white sail. My Minto has a one piece mast, 17 feet long, hard to keep on a boat. And it has some kind of crazy multicolored sail, which is fine, that's fine. So anyway, what I'm going to try and do, because Lady Zephyrus doesn't actually need a sailing dinghy, is find her a really sweet Minto that is just a rowboat and somehow encourage her to sell me this one. But anyway, this is what I got in the meantime. Okay, a little fun little project for today, especially because it's not raining at this moment. For those of you who know, have been following along, you'll know that MB Poem has a 300 feet of 5 16th chain, uh, which is a lot of chain for that boat, and MV Jordy only has 100. So not only am, am I going to switch the windlass uh, between Poem and Jordy, I'm going to move the chain and perhaps the anchor over too. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'll figure it out. But we're taking the chain over today, because now that um, Poem is going to end up in a shed, uh, this will be the last opportunity that Jordy and Poem are close together for a little while, so I want to get this done. As you can see, well, <laughs> maybe as we came in, uh, Poem sits quite low in the front with all that chain aboard. So what I'm going to do is uh, just lower the anchor and the chain into the dinghy, and because, as I previously said, we have two of these dinghies, I'll just lower my chain and anchor into mine, and then just swap the two dinghies and haul all the chain and anchor back out of the dinghy, back in to the boat. Uh, the life jacket is not to pres preserve my life, it's to make sure that the chain does not touch the battery terminals. That would be really ugly. Okay, let's go. That's down. That's a heavy, eh? Okay, now I'm going to rearrange things a bit so it doesn't catch on the anchor too much when it comes back up. There we go. Wait a second. It's got a freewheeling clutch on it. Let's just freewheel it out. Loosen that up. And now I can just... Ah, that's going to be a lot quicker. Gotta be near the end. And there it is. Lloyd did a beautiful splice on this, uh, which I don't want to lose. So I'm gonna go below and disconnect it there. All right then, I've disconnected it below. The reason to put a heavy line on that is um, attached to the chain is to make sure that if you have a runaway it's attached to something and in my belief you always want to make it longer than the distance from wherever you're tying it to to the gypsy on the windlass because that'll guarantee if you happen to be in a power out situation and you jammed and it was running the chain out if it got to the rope it couldn't power out the rope and rip it off whatever it's attached to down below so make sure if you're going to tie off your anchor chain which of course you should do tie it on with a long enough rope that it'll end up in the gypsy before it rips out of the bottom. Excellent. Okay, let's go get the other one. All right then, well let's do the same for Jordy's chain.
<laughs> Goodness, it's a little higher up. <laughs> now, of course, this anchor is way too big for Poem, but I'm really only transferring it over there uh, for the trip between here and the boat shed. Uh, gosh forbid something goes wrong, you really want to have anchoring gear aboard. All right, let's get started. is a beast but it's pretty fast okay so on Jordy as I mentioned I have a hundred feet of chain or had and I think 200 feet of this nice big half inch row probably keep it aboard Jordy as a backup anchor road that I could deploy a second anchor with on the from the other side of the windlass but we'll just haul this out and put it in uh, home now Well, all right then, I'm gonna say that worked out really well. Oh, well, hang on a second. <laughs> We're only halfway there. In fact, we may have only done the easy part. Well, one thing is certain. So when this is done, I'm going to have to come back over and give poor old Poem a bit of a cleanup. Excellent. Now the easy part, although probably quite a bit slower. And there we go. Now to be fair, this is a brand new windlass. Well, it's a year old. And the gypsy on it was custom made for the uh, chain that Lloyd had bought for this boat. And this is not the exact same uh, chain, although it's very, very, very similar. So I don't want to run this chain in this gypsy too much um, in case it starts to wear the bronze a bit. Of course, yeah, it would take a long time to do that. But what's nice is that this uh, windlass and gypsy will be reunited with the chain it was custom built for eventually. Um, not quite sure when, but sometime later this summer or who knows. Uh, the truth is the windlass on Jordy is still functional, although I don't really trust it. One thing about it, it's a lot faster than this. That would take a long time to wind out 300 feet of chain. Or up. Anyway, it's all good. If you're curious about this pennant, this is the Classic Yacht Association's pennant, uh, which Lloyd is a member of, and I'm actually not. So, this will have to come off, at least until I reinstate my membership. Okay, let's go do it all over again on Jordy. Okay, now I am going to uh, fasten this down below because of course this is the anchor I will be using this summer. I don't think it's be that often I put 300 feet out, but the point is I don't trust thing, this thing and if it wants to run away on me, I'd rather not lose it all. So I'll just get this started down here. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. That's messy. This could get really messy, actually. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this gypsy is ever so slightly different than the one that this chain was designed for. And what just happened there can't happen at sea. It just can't. So, uh, I may have to go get my anchor and chain back. But no, of course, for a moment, I thought it was actually 3 8 chain, but it is 5 16 chain. But it's slightly different than this Gypsy is used to. Uh, it actually seems to fit in there perfectly. Now I'm wondering if there was enough twist in the chain and that's what bound it up. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit. I'm not sure I fully trust the setup, but it's not the disaster I thought it was. So I'm going to lower and raise it's the anchor a few times and see if we have uh, that problem reoccurring. Nice bent shaft, eh? Well, I can certainly say that this isn't going uh, to work. Also, I've just noticed that the shaft on this thing is absolutely finished. Not only is it bent, it's seriously loose. So I'm gonna have to put the other windlass on before I go cruising this summer. Well, there's a project. All right then, well, hello and welcome to the Travel Geordie Beer of the Week. We have two super special guests today, uh, David and Raka from my neighbors over here, Pino. I'm sure you've seen this boat in the background in many shots. We first met Last Silver summer, yeah. in uh, on uh, on Salt no on um, Silver Bay. In Silver Bay on Gabriola. Yeah, it was really great. They pulled in. Uh, you all remember Lloyd. Lloyd said, "It's Pino." <laughs> <laughs> they waltzed down the dock and said, "Shall we have a beer?" So it was really great. It was kind of fun. So let's have another beer. Sounds good. What are we drinking? We're drinking Sri Lanka beer with tamarind inside from Sri Lanka. No, but the brewery is da oh, da yeah, <laughs> da da Dagarad. It wouldn't be awesome if it was from Sri Lanka. <laughs> anyway, it sounds, it sounds super interesting. We haven't done it, and it's one of my favorite breweries. So spark it up there. Go for it. Yeah. We're having tall skinnies uh, because we're splitting this three ways, but that smells very we have a few more beers to try if you want. What, mm -hmm. what do you think? Good. Good. Yep. Well, I mean, it's... I have a rep reputation for pouring really badly. Oh, it's dark. Oh, well, so does David, so... It's okay, you have to pour glasses to do that you can, while you wait. While As usual, <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes. That'll be your glass. Okay, 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 just for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> it's the tamarind. We all get, we all get a shot. Uh-huh. It's almost red. Well done. Well, you want to have a few? No, you, I'm going to have to suffer well, with this you, one. You'll hold it then. This is what extreme oh, caution. You, you poured it a lot better than I did. Then I even, have more foam than you. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it at a Japanese where at the end they just put some. Crap. A little, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that might get oh, you shit. in trouble. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can put a little more in here. You saw how they poured those perfectly, did you? Okay, all right. Well, cheers to uh, Dagaran, Sri Lanka. Tamaran. Cheers, cheers, cheers. See what you think cheers. of this. It's good. I could drink that all day. Yeah, it has a uni brew. Sort of taste. Yeah. It really does. I I do not detect tamarind in any way. Exactly, but it has but almost a like a cask beer. Yeah, 
of like a little bit of scotch sort of feel to it kind of a yeah i really like this that's awesome because we were <laughs> looking for a local a local equivalent of something that tastes like fancy, right like the fancy, uh, vinibu stuff right and this tastes yeah. super similar yeah. Yeah. you mean this stuff right yeah, here yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's super similar like they re relabeled this one right as, as exactly. a sort of like excellent oh it's very good well so it's a three for three uh, you mean like in other words we all three like it yes excellent cheers cheers Okay, we have to get on to some of the, um, the housekeeping here. Uh, last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Mark Baker. Mark, get a hold of me. We'll make sure you get your t-shirt. And um, um, I just got to say, an unbelievable um, support uh, came through on Patreon and PayPal in the last week or so. And I'm, I'm really, really super grateful for it. Uh, B. Shepard, uh, Tobias Forsyth, uh, John Armstrong, and Frank Stewart. Uh, thank you all very much for coming aboard as new Patreons. Cheers to you all. And on PayPal, Andrew uh, Petrozenko and Robert Kimakis, thank you ever so much uh, for coming aboard. I'm very, very grateful. Oh, you have a, yeah, it's like a drinking game? It's a drink, well, it, yeah, exactly. The more Patreon, the more sip you take? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> th this won't last very long. Well, anyway, it's pretty good. Um, also, on the Amazon wish list, these are super, super, super cool. Tiny little dimmers. Uh, I don't know if you can see them here. I'm gonna put my glass down. These are very elegant little 12 volt dimmers, uh, fully electronic, so there'll be no noise. Uh, interchangeable knobs from uh, uh, aluminum to anodized aluminum black. I absolutely love these. And um, Alan, you helped me with this already. Dubuc. Dubuc uh, sent these along with um, uh, to me, and I'm so grateful. Thanks ever so much, Alan. Cheers be a potential word of the week word of the week it could be what dimmer you never know how is how are dimmer made Ooh, he's thinking ahead thinking ahead okay so a little bit about you guys when i first met you you told me that you just sailed around the pacific as your first sailing trip what that was that was just on a whim she forced me <laughs> yeah i wouldn't say on a on a whim i guess right. maybe I don't know why did I think we were just very curious and yep. we were planning not to go far and then we just kept going just kept going so we, when you left here you weren't planning to go to Japan well I mean we kind of toyed with the idea but we yeah. like our friends from Alaska were like do you want to have some margaritas right and we we're like well we'll go as far as the margaritas right and then then after that you sort of have to keep going with the trade winds. Yeah. I, th I think during the whole trip, I never imagined that we would actually get there ever. I'm like, if right. we do, then that's great. But yeah. it, it just seemed like a, a thing that. Oh, we're probably going to die between you know <laughs> here and there, and then oh, we don't die. So, well, but probably we're going to die between here and the next place, and then we don't die. So we keep going, and eventually we made it back it's here. It's fun to talk about it in retrospect, but it not. I mean, it's a pretty ambitious trip. It was horrible. It, yeah. What? No, it was awesome. No. No, uh, it was awesome until yeah. we started going. Everywhere like after New, New Zealand. Going to New Zealand. Yeah. Right. Everywhere after New Zealand sucked. Getting really? out of the trade winds is just oh, terrible. It's tough. And coming back, it's tough. Yeah. yeah. Ha had a little upset. A very small boat for uh, yeah. the big ocean. Yeah, to come back. Yeah, lots of fog. Of lots of fog, lots of stuff. But you did it, and you're still aboard, so you haven't. Yep. I mean, it, ha it hasn't changed. It's just added to the passion of boating for you. I think. It raised the bar. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. What, so. You know, like uh, every time you don't die doing something, you realize that you're much stronger than you thought. Yeah, so exactly. You, so, you, so you raise sort of like your your the limits of what you think you can do. Right. And now it's like, well, if, if we can do this, right. I mean, like, you're invincible. Space is the limit. Right. So, so cruising Desolation Sound this summer is kind of you know pretty laid back. It's it's, we're, it's unfamiliar for us. Right. So it's just a different challenge that That's we're right. not really used to dealing with. Right. And also we rigged the boat to to do more northwest specific. So right. the thing where like we survive the winter a little right. bit more. Exactly. Think Getting ready for the forest fires and stuff like that. Right, exactly. Who knows what the summer will be like. Mm. But you're also both artists and musicians. And you yep. your your work on board, your business is on board. I, if you can call it the business. I, I barely understand it. I mean it's a combination <laughs> of if you think I'm low tech, everything's handmade, these folks it's 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 the extreme of low tech. I mean when when did computers peak? Well, peak. A long time ago. <laughs> in, in my eyes, yeah. maybe 80, 85. Right, exactly. So, I mean... And you weren't, you weren't even born. At yeah, that's right. For me. That's right. It's, it's like nostalgia for an era I've never, I've exactly. never experienced. So, so, they develop tools, they develop programs using the very simplest processors and the very simplest code. I mean, that's the only way I can think of describing it, but 
it's it's a, it's your challenge. It, it's your it's your raison d'etre, right? To somehow simplify computing and the, art and music redu- all in one. Reducing things to first principles all the right. time. Right. So we're trying to keep things understandable. Right. And documenting things that are not. Right. Sort of like trying to discourage waste. Right. Yeah, and that's stuff that I was advised by living on a boat, I think, primarily. Just sure. By all the constraints that we suddenly had. And, you know. Yeah. Well, you were just on, on board with us replacing some inscrutable piece of hardware. Right. That's true. So, I mean, it was a perfect example you saw earlier in this episode. Uh, we were bored and we replaced a complex voltage regulator with a single real stat, which is working. Is it working? It seems to be working. Yeah, yeah, it's working. yeah pretty cool. We gotta get a knob for it, but that's cool. We're gonna make a knob for it. Are you? Wood knob, yeah. Okay, all right. Is it a little mahogany? I'd say it's a little mahogany. Well, we have some, okay. we have some nice wood. We can nice, use. okay. Some hardwood, so it blends with the rest. Perfect. Look forward to seeing it. Mm-hmm. So, you guys have a, quite a few social connections. You have 100 rabbits, but you have a couple more. I mean, how, how, how would people follow what you're up to? Well, 100 rabbits is a perfect gateway into gateway. Like finding right. whatever right. we're working So basically search 100 rabbits. I know there's a YouTube, but I think there's you'll find other uh, things. Our, on our main thing is our website, which is kind of a wiki. Right. So I think that's what we just, because we used to do some videos, now we just write. Yeah, so exactly. We just do detailed posts on everything and right. we document everything. Everything they do, I mean, which includes, you know, a food pro- simple food production, uh, pickling, uh, yeah, just both roll projects. Roll projects, everything you do. It's like stay resilient, so like trying to find ways to maybe um, survive things that, that What break, might be coming? Things that, that fail, right. services that become unavailable. Exactly. Sort of like just, just learning to, to simple tasks. To, right. You know, live simply. It's the ultimate in live simply. And I thought I lived simply. No, I think there's probably more. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose. We, we're pretty privileged sitting here drinking beer on a sunny day. Yeah, I mean... The one sunny afternoon all week. Mm. We've been getting the boat ready to, to go cruising. To go cruising. So filling up the water tank. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Excellent! Well, so glad to have you aboard for the beer of the week, and so glad to have been neighbors and good friends over this past year. Well, Can't wait to do some cruising with you and catch up with you next year. Yeah, we'll follow each other up north. Excellent! So there's one more thing we need. I do this thing where I give away a t-shirt every week, and they have to put a comment down below using the word that I give them now. So I'm putting you on the spot. What what word can we give people to have to put in a comment? Three, two, one. Potential meter. Yeah. But, oh, potentiometer, <laughs> right, for the thing. Okay, excellent. Oh, there you have one right there. Whoa. So. And yeah, that's well, what we did on our boats. So. Right, exactly. Excellent. So, uh, well, there's a lot of potential in that. All right, folks, use the word potentiometer in a comment down below, and I'll pick it random over the next week or so worth of comments, and if I pick you, you'll have won a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Good luck putting that in your poetry. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Cheers. See you next week. All right.